right, welcome back, everybody. It is Kelby joined with Drew and Tim. We are here for Learn from Tim episode today. How are you guys doing on this fine Wednesday morning? We usually do Fridays. It's Wednesday. It's Wednesday. I'm doing fantastic, so I'm going to get better. Get better. It's the best day ever. Hump day. Every day. They say. Every day. Okay. Every day. So, yeah, let's just jump right into it. Today, we are going to focus on the process of getting your service disabled veteran owned small business certification or license it's a certification certification now we're going to really put a focus on anybody that's interested in the process and starting out new Um, because obviously anybody who's been through it specifically tim he's going to talk about how it works what it all takes for and maybe if you've already been through it you might learn something and something you didn't know or something might not that might improve it so yeah, let's just get right in. So what qualifies you to get this certification? Well, you had to have an injury in the while you were in the military. So it's a service connection um, item that uh, if something happened to you while you were serving, and that becomes, in, depending what your percentages are and what happened. So it does depend on the percentage? No, it doesn't. Okay. Um, it can be a zero percent as long as you're so uh, service connected. Service connected. So it's a zero percent to a hundred percent, and then that uh, the paperwork you will receive, and it usually comes from St. Louis, Missouri. It's all that paperwork they put in files, and that's the first thing that you have to have with you um, once you're out. That paperwork comes with you. So when you get your DD two fourteen, or if you're medically discharged or an honorable discharge you're able to receive all that paperwork. Mm -hmm. And then if you want to feel that this is what you want to do, what your love is, your goals, or your vision to start up a business, that's the first piece of paperwork that you have to have in hand. And then it used to be CBE was a certification uh, verification through Washington, D.C. Since last year, they changed it to be completely the Small Business Association. Um, they are SBA. Um, they're the ones now that are doing the certification. So the first thing you have to do is call the SBA and tell them or look on their website and see the things that you need to be verified for service disabled or veteran owned small business, um, for anything that you want to do. That's could be from retail, um, all the way up to construction or anything that you build. Yeah, that was my next question. What, what what are some of the businesses? Does it really limit any kind of type of business that you can do? It's any kind of business. Anything that the federal government will purchase. Oh, I didn't know that. That's kind of cool. Yeah, that's what I was kind of curious. Like, so, because we're basically contracting. Yes. Typically, here at Armcore, right, we pick up contracts through the federal government. Is that... So for someone, like you said, would you say retail? What can they do? Well, they can sell um, products at... Uh, Let's say, what do they call the, 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 the stores on base? Um, they can have a product that they make and sell them on store. It's made from a service disabled or veteran owned small business company, um, uh, the commissary. Um, you can sell, you know, there's food products, there's things that are small business, but you have a stipulation of how big you are. Um, every item they call NAX codes um, to where your uh, cost of goods. Or, or your construction company, or anything else that you're a veteran-owned business. Mm-hmm. So, like, could you make anything, like, if you wanted to make a product, like a knife, say, and could you put it in, like, a Dick's Sporting Goods or, like, something like that? Or does it have to be into a military piece? It, it's got to be in the federal government piece. Okay. Um, and that's why they created the Small Business Association um, to help small business to succeed. And that's from minorities, Native American, women-owned, um, hub zone. There's all these certifications, and then the service disabled, and the veteran-owned business. So they they um, they're the umbrella for the small business um, area for certification. Yeah. So if you have expertise in any field, there's a way for you to get into that. If there you're is a veteran. If you're, a, that's, I mean, we're talking to everyone out there who's a veteran and is curious on what they can do in life. If you're an expert in something, put it to good use and go get the certification and start a business. It, it is really a great benefit that the veterans out there that have served, they are deserved 
um, to come out and be able to have a program like that to help them succeed. Mm -hmm. Um, it's already a hard transition, but if you have a talent, just like you said, Drew, um, if you make pocket knives, um, the pocket knife could be sold to the military. Let's say you come up with some kind of combat knife and then, and you go to in front of the government and say, well, this knife is really cool. You've created that, uh, that invention or that dream of yours selling that product. Is this known when you get out of the military or like, do the people know um, that you can do this or like there's this opportunity to own a veteran owned business? I did not know it when I got out. Um, I just learned it from hearing piece to piece. I didn't know there. I probably, I don't know if I would have been in construction or not. Yeah. I started yeah. once I got out, I, that's all I knew was construction. Yeah. But they're, they're, it's funny that you can search websites what governments are looking for. So you get on your website and you search um, through SAM and you see what kind of product the government's buying. Um, they're, they're, there's mouse pads. Um, there's all kinds of things that the government buys through small business and that helps them. So they're always shopping or looking for someone that does that. So a follow-up question. So when you, how did you find out first off about this? Uh, it's gotta be maybe 20 years ago. Okay. So when you did figure out or find out about it, what stopped you? Did it stop you from doing like pulling the trigger on it? Cause there might be a veteran out there that maybe knows about this process or now that they're going to hear this episode and hear that there's this process out there and it's available. Do you think, It'll hold some back. Will it be fear? Will it be the unknown of the process? Well, I had fear. Um, jumping into something that you had to have responsibility for was fear um, because I was so used to structure. And, you know, when you get out, you go to a place and you work for them and structure, um, you have that fear. And some people can even create something small that they can still go work for somebody but still do this on the side. Um, but once I started finding out, I really knew it was there, but it was just a matter of trying to get past that fear. Mm -hmm. Um, and it, if it's in your blood or not in your blood, it's really how you feel about it. Um, that's what started me getting into it. And so then the, the criteria was so hard to get through. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be upfront. It, it's a lot of paperwork. It's a lot of patience. It's a lot of searching of all the things that you need and what you have to get. So basically when you're in the military, hurry up and wait, <laughs> fill out all these documents and wait for a long process. It took nine months. <laughs> and, yeah. but I feel that the SBA, since they've taken over it, it will be sooner. Um, it can maybe be 90 days. I don't know. I didn't have to go through them. I know where I had to go through, but I'm reading the SBA's website and what they're doing. It looks a lot cleaner um, simpler on filling things out. And they also give you guidance on if you can be that, mm -hmm. that person. So did you, did you start Encore first or apply for the certification first? Or do you have to have a business plan? I assume you have to have a business plan. Um, so it, it, it was more of a business plan of what I was going to do. Um, you have to have a lot of the information. Um, once your service connected, you have to have business name where you're going to do it because they're going to ask you for a lot of paperwork um there are situations that some of the small business world they're asking you to be already in business in three years <clears throat> i don't know that they're asking that for um the service connected part of it but it's always good to talk to the sba it's free and there's also ptac ptac they are free and to help anyone that wants to be in business or ask questions, they're phenomenal. And uh, they, they do a lot of procurement and they're a tech, a technical assistance. And so they will help you, you know, without even me saying something, you go to them, that right there is a huge start. Uh, that's kind of good to hear for the veterans that are out there listening to this because they already kind of have their foot in the door being a veteran. Um, and wanted to start a business because they have everything kind of lined up. You have to do a lot of paperwork. But for me as a civilian, I feel like it's, where do I go? Where's my route? But, but you could just walk right to them and be like, hey, this is my business plan. 
where's the paperwork? Mm -hmm. But for me, it's like, I got to fill out an LLC, got to do what I like. I got to figure it out on my own. Yes. But in in the small business world, though, the SBA can help a lot of other people, just not veterans. Uh, It's the women owned. I mean, there are so many good certifications for a lot of situations that people, if they want to get in business, the SBA is the first. It's a small business. And that's why they call it for a reason. It's a small business. The add of credit or the add of advantage is that certification in what you are. If there's a certification, you can be small business disadvantaged. Um, there's a lot of situations that they can put you into. Mm-hmm. So I guess on my one question about did you start Encore first? So did you start Encore, start this process, and in the meantime, were you able to bid on other work, like private work? or? Well, I, I, I kind of knew about this, um, having a company before Armcore. Um, but yes, uh, once I had Armcore started, I got it started first. And the first thing is to do is have your three best friends, mm-hmm. is have a good bank have a good insurance guy or person to talk to and then you have a good accountant so you get them them three that you want to try to get a line of credit it's if it's twenty five thousand or ten thousand dollar line of credit you have credibility they do look at your uh, credit scores and see if you're going to be responsible for that they do ask you for that and then um, having a good insurance company and, and your bank and your cpa um that is where you have to go. You got to get that first, and then you turn in the paperwork for the company that you've created. If it's an LLC, the name, but you need to know it's already registered because that's what you're going to register. You can't register your name. You just got to be at least fifty-one percent owner of that business. As long as you're fifty-one percent and you're controlled and operated by you, fifty-one percent, then they that's what they allow. You gotcha. can't be a 30% owner and be a service disabled connect. You have to be 51%. Gotcha. So, um, I guess what I was, or more what I was asking is, so a veteran out there new to this process, they can do it on the side if they're working for someone else. Most definitely. They can get this process going and stuff. It'll be a lot of extra work on top of the job that you're doing, but um, to make people know that they can do this on the side is important. Create your company. Mm-hmm. Create your company. Create your name. Get that registration through the state. Wherever you're at in the United States, is get your name. So once you get that registered, and then you go to the SBA, and you see if you qualify. They'll ask you a whole bunch of questions. You have all your paperwork in order. And then they say, here, let's go ahead and get the application. And so you start filling out the application. It goes in a process. And then they'll email you back and ask you for more documentation. Um, you know, your shares. How many how many shares do you own in the company? You can say 100% or 51 or 60 or whatever, as long as it's 51. So, yes, they can do it on their side Yeah, at any time. So besides the 51% stipulation, what other stipulations are there with this um, owning the business? How much self-perform work do you have to do? For instance, with the construction, is there a stipulation that we have to do? Yeah, there's a stipulation with the, uh, the service disabled world or the veteran or anything that you do. Um, you have to at least in the general construction world, you have to at least perform 15%. Then if it's a uh, electrical bid to the government or an HVAC bid or anything that you are different than what the general construction is, you have to self perform 25%. They make that to make sure that you're at least performing it. You just can't go out there and manage it and hire someone else to do it because that's the reason for, the certifications to help you grow. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they don't want you to be a pass through. Um, it's not about a pass through. It's about what you can do and how you create your business. And that's why the program's out there. Okay. And I know you mentioned something about volume. Um, how much can you, I guess, revenue and whatnot over, is there a specific amount that you can make as a company? It's all about the NAX code. And when I say NAX code, it's about what you do. Mm. What do you sell? What you do? That's your perform. So, Next code two three six two two zero. It's not going to mean anything to anyone listening to this, but it's general construction. It's a forty five million dollar for at least if you can do forty five million each year. It's a five year um, average, but if you do forty five million the first three and fifty to fifty three million in the last two, you've surpassed that average. So it's an average within the five years. Mm. 
so, um, selling products, uh, dental stuff. Um, it's maybe five million per year, so you can't sell any more than five million a year, or you can do ten one year and do two the following year, as long as it averages out that past five years mm-hmm. of what that NAX code um, limitation is. Gotcha. You got anything to add right now? So would the vi- like. If people are going into the business as a veteran, what would your advice be for like, would you want to keep it the steady average of like 5 million a year or would you want them to do like a, a quick 10 million and then two, two? I think what you need to do for the first year is get it tested. You're going to, you're not going to go out there and blow up and do 10 million right away. Yeah. You, you want to do and feel, and this is where I've learned greed can take over. Um, it's not about the amount of income. It's about what you make. You can do 5 million and you can net, um, you know, 10%. It's better than, than doing 20 million and only netting a percent. Yeah. Um, be careful as you grow, do smaller things and, and get yourself acclimated to the process. And then as you grow, get to that. And there might be a limitation, you know, you might say, well, geez, this has really helped me. I've grown. I've seen companies that started out being small, having hub zone or the service that's able to veteran owned business and they outgrew it. And that's when you got to make decisions. Do I want to stay here and be this certification or do I just say, Hey, it's time to grow. Hmm. But the good thing is about it is that you've done a lot of work with the government, the federal world that they get to know you. And that's the thing you can do. If they know you well enough and you grow out of that certification, they will still say, hey, you're a large business or you're out of it, but here's opportunity. So there's always opportunity. You're still a veteran-owned business, but you're not certified to do that. Can you division out to Um, stay with that? See, there's where the small business comes in. They're different. With CVE, we couldn't own any more other businesses other than one. Because they wanted to make sure that you were completely control of that one business. You, you, then when you start owning some other ones, they start saying, well, how can you control this one that's certified? You know, how can you certify other ones? And they didn't allow that. Mm -hmm. The SBA, um, I haven't got deep enough. Um, my certification, it, it expires in 2026 and then I have to renew it. So then I will get to know that progress, that process. Um, I always like to be ahead of the game to see what that process is. But it would be good, I think, that, and maybe I don't know, and someone can tell me that, you know, in a small business world as a service-disabled veteran, we can own more than one company as long as we don't own 51% of that other company. Mm -hmm. How often do you have to recertify? Every three years. Okay. Um, But just doing it, is worth a shot. Mm-hmm. And even if you grab onto partners that do not control, but it can help you, um, there's other programs out there like mentor protege programs. There are joint venture programs. So if you create your business, you can really say, Hey, as long as I'm 51% of this joint venture, you can earn business that way. Or of mentor protege is meaning a large business comes and helps you, but the SBA has an application they have to accept that the mentor, a big company, is helping you grow. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of avenues. Awesome. Uh, so I, I mentioned this a lot, and after the last four years of being with Armcore and hearing about the hurdles and hearing about some of the stuff, lawsuits that we've had to go through, it almost calluses you and makes you stronger working with the federal government. So that's another thing and pro that, I mean, I, I look at it that way. It kind of like who, who else is going to do it? I mean, do you think some of these private companies out there that we know of that could maybe do this, they might have the capabilities, but after working with the federal government for what, 13 years now, 14 years, it's been 14 years in June. So is um, it a different process working with the federal government versus a private? Yes. It, I've always said, if you start out your business working for the federal government and then go into the private sector, you are, are 40 steps ahead. Detail, paperwork, the structure is strong. It's hard. You don't get anywhere in life unless you do something hard. Mm-hmm. 
And I look at it is that if you're doing something for the federal government, you are learning so much that your people, you can watch your people go and do a private job and they're smoking through it. It is tough to get in the federal government. I'm not going to lie. And there's a lot of people that have gotten in 2008, 2009, the, 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 the economy crashed for private work. And there was a lot of people trying to get into the federal work. They got some projects and they couldn't make it because of the stipulation of paperwork, um, submittal processes, the processes with the COs and CORs, the federal government workers, employees, you had to contend with um, their stipulation. But now I look at the people that started here. Um, there's some here at 10 years, seven years. Their process is so much tighter, and they really don't realize that. Every day they come in the morning, and they can complain mm-hmm. all day long. But they don't. what they don't realize is when they can look in the mirror and say, oh, my gosh, you know, look how far I've come. Look how far I have done it. We've got so many employees that that, that just – you look at their mind was like a child. Then the maturity grew so much faster yeah. because of pressures, um, things that they were required to do, processes and systems, even makes your system even better. And that's even in life because mm-hmm. you, you go through a request mm-hmm. from the federal government, your processes and your systems become so much better. And that's, that's where that team comes in. And you realize how much you're actually capable capable of as a human. So it's it's rewarding. Um, so how many what are, what are some things you know now that you wish you knew when you first started the process that can maybe help someone that's new to the process right now? You know, I I've been that asked that question a couple of times, and I don't know if if I would have known the things that I went through back then. I'm not saying I'm good at what I do now, but I wouldn't be as good as we are at now. Yeah. I think that things have to be thrown in front of you without knowing it so that you can adapt to it quicker because you're on a defense. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I really can't think of anything. You know, I asked that question. I, I don't regret it. I don't regret when people – like I even when people ask that question on – other podcasts you listen to, like if you knew, knew, knew what you knew now back then, what would you, what would that do? But maybe you have to go through all that to get to where you are now. When you think about it, maybe you have to, because I think someone coming into the process knew they need to experience that pain to be able to grow through it and learn through it because people don't know your experience. You don't know their experience. So maybe it's just like, maybe that question is completely irrelevant. Right. Well, it explains that you can't succeed without failures. Yeah. And I feel like this business has had failures at times, whether it be employees that you've hired that have gone right away or, or jobs that we've bid that we lose money on. We learn from those experiences and we, I don't think we'd want to go back and change those because Mm -hmm. we wouldn't be here. We wouldn't be where we're at now. Right. Everybody's different. I mean, we're different. So why would we do same thing? Why would we do the same thing as someone else? Because we might react different. We have different emotions. We have different thoughts. We have different environments we grew up in or are around. So it's just maybe you got to experience that hurdle and s- attack it differently than maybe you did. I think everyone has to go through that experience. Um, just like a baby as they're trying to walk a child, you can't teach them to walk. Mm-hmm. You know, um, they only wor- learn by themselves by hitting their head on a coffee table or falling flat on their face, or falling backwards, you, you, you can't teach them. And that's where I look at going in that small business world, going and doing it on my own. Um, I had help, but then after the help is gone, you're going to learn every process. I wouldn't be as far as I am at if I wouldn't have learned them. Mm-hmm. You have to be stuck in a position, just like you were saying about lawsuits. Um yeah, it's an everyday thing. Mm-hmm. Um, you, it's not because of how you run. It's just because other people's actions, you know, you, you got to understand other people's actions of what happened. They do. Did we do something wrong? Maybe, but look what they have done and look what they are doing. 
It's other people's actions that put you in situations. And so you can only make it good mm-hmm. or you can just give up. Yeah. And so I think that's how people think. I think that it's their actions. If they want to really go work out, it's their actions. It's, mm-hmm. it's, I think when you put a process and system together, it's not about people going to you and say, well, what's the plan? <laughs> well, it, it, you make the plan. You make the plan to figure out how to get to that process and system work. Mm-hmm. And that's what, just like a center for a quarterback. He knows he has to put that ball in the quarterback's hand in a certain way. But it's his plan to figure out how to do that. Do you put the seams to the side? Do you put the seams up? Yeah. Or it's a punter or a kicker or anything else. You have to make the plan. And it's up to you to make that plan to hit that system. Definitely. That process. So before we wrap this up, do you either you want to add anything? Uh, I think the best advice for anyone starting a business, and I haven't started one, but I think you shouldn't be afraid to fail because like we said before, that's how you learn. I think a lot of people going out on their own, especially from the military are very afraid to fail because you know, there's a, I mean, there's, there's not a lot structure of structure and discipline. Yeah. Right. I mean, they learn all that in the military and they, I mean, they rarely fail in the military, but coming out into the civilian world, there's, it's a whole new ball game. So I think failure is a good thing. And we've seen that through this company and we've learned a ton and we've seen so many scenarios where it's just helped us in the long run. That's a testament to the discipline and structure you have in the military because a mistake in the military, especially if you're at war can be detrimental. Mm. So that's, that goes to show you have to have the discipline and the structure to, you're going to, everybody's going to fail no matter how much discipline you have, but that's, that's where you grow. That's where you learn to not do that thing, do that again. So discipline structure is huge. You know, and look at it this way too. Some veterans don't want to come out and have their own business, but they can take that same attitude and work for somebody else and grow. Mm -hmm. They can grow within a company that they can move themselves up that ladder just is learning the same way. They don't have to go out and do their business. Mm -hmm. They can go in within a business and help that business. They're veterans. Your structure is strong. You can help a lot of people by, by doing that. And well, their structure is strong, and also they've been doing in the military their MOS for four, six, eight, ten years. So, like, use your skills that you learned from the military without you even knowing it, like a mechanic yeah. or construction mm-hmm. or radio or anything. I, I I just feel like there's they don't know where to start sometimes. That buzzword entrepreneur is that's exactly what it is nowadays, especially with the social media and the internet and all this stuff. But there is an entrepreneur in I entrepreneur yeah. positions and companies that yeah. companies need because it's just working together as a team and building your community. We don't need a thousand company or a million companies and just we don't need a bunch of companies. Go go work on the ones that are current right now and build them bigger and stronger. Mm-hmm. That there's that opportunity too. Yeah, because if you grow within the company, you don't have the risk. You know, the risk is your life and your family. Yeah, and that's that's what you need to think about. Um, so, it it it's it's a it's a great thing. And 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 in anyone, and we're having this podcast. If anyone has any questions, mm-hmm. you know, give us a call. Let us do whatever we can yeah. to help you out to get through wherever you want to go. Yeah. And and it's that's what we're about. This is what Arm Corps is about. We want to help veterans yeah. or even in the small business world. For sure. So to kind of clump all these three, there's, I got these last three questions I had yep. were kind of phases in your process. Um, did you ever feel like you weren't going to succeed? Did where, what was the moment where you thought you were going to, this is going to work. And I think a con, I, I love the story about grandpa Butch that you tell about what he said to you before he had passed. So if you want to kind of explain that process. Hmm. Wow. Um, (laughs) Put you on the spot. Yeah, that, that's, um, so where, where I felt that I wasn't going to succeed was the start. When I don't feel like I'm going to succeed is how you think. And that's every day. If you can use that as a driver and you can feel yourself overpowering that, it's faith. And so when you feel you can overpower, when you don't feel like you're going to succeed, 
you absolutely set your mind of going, I'm going to succeed every time I wake up. Because what you're thinking is before your feet hit that floor, you're thanking God. I'm, I'm strong in that. I wasn't. I am now. And that's what helped me get through it. And how do I know I'm going to succeed now? It's because the people we have, the people we train, the people we help, the people we give. That's why I know we're going to succeed. No matter what we do, as you're sitting there, Drew, you're sitting there, I know that everyone else out here in this office, I have no problems. I sit in my office, I look what's going on, and I see that I know and I feel that we're succeeding because we have great people. I can't do it on my own, and I'll never be on my own. The only thing I started on my own was to fill out paperwork. And that's where God gave me the gift of saying, hey, there's people coming to you. Fully believe it because, man, as I did that, it was a turnaround. So my story with my father was I started a business. He was not in a good place. Um, he, he fought in Vietnam, and a lot of Vietnam soldiers don't talk. Um, they were always quiet. Um, even when they were coming back, they were getting booed, spit on, and that's not fair. Mm-hmm. Or we wouldn't have what we have now. But he got his last two years of his life. He he fell in a, a hole that he felt and he knew he couldn't get out of. And I knew that. And we were so close. We were always close. And um, I'm still close. You know, I look at him every morning when I walk in my office because I think he was part of what we have here. And so um, when he um, found out that he had cancer, I remember this day, the doctor told and came and um, looking in his eyes, it was defeat. And I knew he could win. I knew, I knew if I came up to him and I said, Dad, you can make this. It's a spot. You've always been through so much. But he was 68 and uh, I seen his face and he was rough as it was. He didn't want to do anything else. And so that day he came back to the nursing home and um, I can remember very closely is that I was sitting there talking to him and um, the last words I, uh, I said, dad, you have a good night and everything's going to be okay. And he, uh, I'm sorry. I'll take your time. He said, everything's going to be good. A week later, or that night, um, the nursing home called us, and um, he died the next morning at 2 a.m. My wife, Mary, and uh, Jess were there, and they told me to leave because they didn't want me to watch him pass. So I came home, and, uh, and he passed it, too. So I came back. <laughs> the first thing I did, oh, weird, I keep looking and thinking about it, weird, I came up to him and saluted him. I don't know why I did that. I had to look goofy. But he was my um, my mentor. Didn't say much, but then last two years he taught me a ton He fell in a bad place. I watched him. He drank. I watched him more. He taught me a lesson he didn't even know. So I'm not going to fall in that trap. And then he passed. Before he passed, when I walked out that door, he said, everything's going to be good. A week later, we picked up three projects. We, our first project was just, uh, we had small ones. And, um, and then we picked up a third floor um, addition at the Columbus VA. We picked up uh, Washington Courthouse. We picked up three projects. And it was all him. And what was crazy is that we didn't do nothing but credit card purchases. You know, we only did a hundred thousand dollars our first year. The following year we did one point three. The following year we did three million, and we grow. We keep growing. And um, 
his spirit's here. And I feel that the spirit here, when people walk in here, that's how I treat them. Because if I'm going to dictate something, they don't need to be deserved to work here. Um, basically, they dictate themselves how they want to mm-hmm. grow. And so I will never, ever forget that day. And I think that's where our growth came. Now we get hit with lawsuits or different difficulties with d- bad drawings or something that's always happened. Um, the first one I remember, it was the hardest thing ever to get through business. Yeah. Three years we had to wait for recovery. We got through it. Yeah, I mean, you can always hear that voice in the back of your head, I'm sure, is everything's going to be okay. Everything's going to be okay. Yeah. And, you know, that's God's word. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, that's God's word is everything going to be okay. And I, I'm, I'll tell you, that day is when my spiritual – uh, feeling and I feel it. I feel him right now. I've never felt him, but I feel him more and more every day. Yeah. Because if we don't go through these things, you don't become a business and you won't become successful because you have to learn without knowing it's coming. Yeah, for sure. Well, that was awesome. That was really good. I don't. You got anything to add? No. Want to yeah. add anything else? Well, that was hard enough for crying out loud. <laughs> No, that was a good, that was good. I hope it, I hope it helps someone out there. And like we said, if you have any questions that you want us to answer on one of these shows, please start reaching out and asking the questions. No question is a dumb question. We are all over all of the social media platforms now, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn. Is that it? Is that going to cover them all? Uh, yeah, all the podcast platforms, Spotify. Yeah. Um, iHeartRadio. So we're just trying to, ma- we're trying to do our, our duty and provide a service and value to everybody else out there. And I think today was a great episode for someone that's kind of sitting there curious about the process, wanting to start the process or doesn't even know about the process. And now they're like, Oh man, I want to learn more about this. Reach out. We'll, we'll, we'll sit down and talk. Tim was willing to sit down and talk and discuss the process and help you out. That's what we're here for is helping each other. Yeah. So if you guys don't. Yeah. I, I, I just want to help. You know, I, I know what everyone here, and I can tell you everyone here wants to help. Mm-hmm. And everything, I'll tell you, I, I got people that has never done construction before that could actually sit there and tell them how they learn where they got. I mean, it, the education and, and what they've learned could help so many people, and they would be so proud to do that. Yeah, And I, I, that's what we want. Definitely. Well, hey, I appreciate your time today, Drew. Thank you. Yeah. Um, everybody else have a great day. Good day.